let's go through some of Prince Philip's. I mean, they're called gaffes on the media. Some might call them bigoted or at least grossly insensitive. You can decide how you'd like to describe them. But we're going to hear them a lot over the next 24 hours referred to as colourful. Um, but we're probably not going to get them plastered across the television very often. So so because we're an alternative media platform, let's give you the, al the alternative um, rundown of um, things Prince Philip has said. Remember, he, you know, if he has a job in terms of public service, it's to be a bit of a diplomat. So if he's undiplomatic, that's, you know, it's a bit of a problem with the public service. Anyway, I'll take you through them. This was during the 1981 recession. Uh, lots of people unemployed. Um, Prince Philip says, everybody was saying we must have more leisure. Now they're complaining they're unemployed. Um, which is, <laughs> oh, he was such a moral leader for our country. Uh, in 1984, after accepting a, a small gift from a local woman in Kenya, he said, you are a woman, aren't you? The stuff where he's speaking to people in the former British Empire is, to me, the grossest. Um, 1988, we are now, he was speaking to a German news agency, um, and he said, in the event that I am reincarnated, I would like to return as a deadly virus to contribute something to solving overpopulation. That's worth noting. You can be reincarnated as anything. He's chosen a deadly virus to contribute something to solving overpopulation. Now, when everyone says on the, the news, I've heard it so many times today, his redeeming factor was he was an environmentalist. You've got to remember when aristocrats are environmentalists, normally what that means is they want to control the birth rates of the poor. Let's go to 1995 to a Scottish driving instructor. Remember, these are supposed to be the, the, the people keeping together the union. Um, he says, how do you keep the natives off the booze long enough to pass the test? <laughs> Um, 1996, we're in response to calls to ban firearms after the Dunblane shooting. If a cricketer, for instance, suddenly decided to go into a school and batter a lot of people to death with a cricket bat, which he could very easily do, I mean, are you going to ban cricket bats? Uh, which is why you can see this is a hereditary job. If, if, there was, if there was any meritocracy here, someone who made that argument, I mean, unless you're in America where you could probably become a Republican president saying that kind of, that kind of stuff, I don't, I don't think that would, that would work here. Um, again, this is another racist one, which I think are the most um, just outrageous ones really to then have all of this hagiography that brushes over it today. This was from 1999, commenting on an old fashioned fuse box in a factory near Edinburgh. Prince Philip said, it looks as if it was put in by an Indian. That was in 1999. That wasn't even that long ago. Um, 2001, um, to a 13-year-old Andrew Adams, who told Prince Philip he wanted to go into space, he told the 13-year-old, you're too fat to be an astronaut. <laughs> now, I mean, obviously, that's incredibly cruel, but it is just very surreal to have someone who is, you know, their job is to, is to basically be this sort of cuddly figurehead, and then you're telling 13-year-olds they're too fat to go into space. Very bizarre. Um, 2002, to an Australian Aborigine during a visit, he says, still throwing spears. Very gross. 2009, another racist one. After looking at the name badge of businessman Atul Patel at a palace reception for British Indians, he said, there's a lot of your family in tonight. Oh, my God. You can see why they took him off royal duty, can't you? Um, and my final one, this was to Malala Yousafzai. Children go to school because their parents don't want them in the house. Now, the context here is that Malala survived an assassination attempt by the Taliban and now campaigns for the right of girls to go to school without fear. Now, Aaron, as I've said, some of those, some of those in a way were constructed in a fairly, in a funny way. I wouldn't make the jokes, but, you know, now they're there. Um, I mean, he was a 99-year-old who said some bigoted things. You know, there'll be many 99-year-olds who said some bigoted things over a period of a, well, 99 years, I suppose. Um, but it was also his job to be a diplomat. And I suppose all of the media platforms are struggling as to how to describe this. They're all talking about it very euphemistically. They were gaffes. I've heard people on the radio, you know, the official newsreaders say colorful language. Mm. And it is a bit like, oh, it's a bit awkward, isn't it? Sort of covering for him in that way. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think people like the word gaff because A, it erases obviously some horrific things he's saying, but also people say, just call it what it is, racist. You say, well, if it was just racist, that's one thing, but it's not racist. It's misogynistic. It's fat phobic. It's racist. It's, you know, it's every, he's even slagging off Scots multiple times. You know, he really doesn't, he doesn't really leave many people out. So I think bigotry is probably the best, the best way to put it. I think mm. you know, that term gaff, I mean, it's a strange one, but what I find really interesting, Michael is, and it, no, this is, this is Tisky Sass. Of course, I always, I always talk about Jeremy Corbyn is that we have had a media for years 
saying that Jeremy Corbyn is a racist, that you know socialists in this, in this country are racists, then we have somebody who has an encyclopedia. You could fill the shelves up with all the files of him saying bigoted comments, Prince Philip. Nobody's going to say the word, right? And I think that really does say a great deal about the, 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 the state of the conversation around racism in this country. You know, we've just had the, the, the Sewell, Sewell, Sewell report. You can correct me on, on that pronunciation, Tony Sewell. But it was the report that came out at the end of March. And, you know, its conclusion was basically Britain's the least racist country around. Basically, that was the conclusion. And when we see Donald Trump say these things to Piers Morgan in 2018, saying, I'm the least racist person there is, we laugh, right? In a similar way that we laugh at Prince Philip, because it's it's absurd. It's a, it's a stupid person saying something really absurd. But actually, that's kind of Britain's national ideology, is that actually we are the least racist country in the world. And the thing with Prince Philip is, if you actually acknowledge what he's saying, it goes so far and it's been given such a free pass for so long, you know, you're letting out a real can of worms. So like you say, they, they absolutely cannot use the R word, man of his time, forthright, you know, uh, loose lipped, but you cannot call him a racist. Uh, and I think that's quite revealing, really. And it, it tells you about the complete absence of sincerity about having a meaningful conversation about race and racism in this country. Like you say, he's a complex guy. I don't, he died. I don't want him to be remembered by everybody forever as a racist. Cancel Prince Philip, right? But, you know, let's just let's just call facts facts. You know, he, he was a guy who said lots of racist things. doesn't seem a particularly difficult thing to do. I mean, that's 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 how literally most people will associate, you know, Prince Philip with their sort of mental you know, mood board, they would say, oh, yeah, he said some really, really crappy things, actually. Some might find them funny or whatever, but that's what he would be associated with. And even the people that find them funny would accept they were racist. And yet we're, we're not really we're not really talking about that. And I think that's really important. I think that really tells you a lot about the British media and about our political culture. Mm -hmm.